Next up, Gung Ho America. Expo live stream. Hope you're all doing well and hanging out. Got a lot of people, a lot of games uh, today. And uh, we're excited to be part of it. I am Luke Brown, Senior Community Manager at uh, Gung Ho America. And today we are going to be showcasing a brand new game developed entirely in house here at uh, Gung Ho America called Volta X. Uh, Volta actually made its public debut at PAX West uh, 2019, and we've been, you know, tinkering and working on it ever since then. And, uh, you know, with me here today, I have uh, Ryan Thompson, one of the devs on our game. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, Luke. How are you? Uh, you know, <laughs> we're doing this exciting new uh, event from home, digital event, live <laughs> events, and uh, you know it's it's a lot different from where we were, uh, you know, close to a year ago with PAX West. But the game's come a long way uh, since that time too. So uh, you know, for anybody unfamiliar uh, with Volta X and uh, everything, it's an exciting new real time action strategy battler with big robots <laughs> pilots it's got a, a incredible uh you know it's it's a little bit of a 70s ish anime vibe going with it but uh you can tell the art style is pretty sweet too and uh you know we're excited to to run through a little bit with it today obviously you guys saw the trailer there uh, showcasing a little bit of what makes the games work. So just to go over a little bit about what we're going to do today on the stream. Uh, you know, Brian and I are going to talk a little bit about the game, uh, what he has been working on himself and things like that. We're going to show a tiny little bit of what awaits you in our single player story. And then we're going to jump in uh, to some of the PvP action and show you some customization. So yeah, show you some of the uh, action you can get into in this game and how it all works uh so ryan you know when we do our streams at gung-ho typically it's a community manager and a community manager just because mm -hmm. uh, most of our games are made in japan and we don't have the op op often have the opportunity to have a, a developer on with us yeah. so this is a new new vibe for us so you know why don't you talk us a little bit through, you know, your experience from PAX to now working on uh, Volta X? Sure, and I think that's that's kind of a fact that I don't think a lot of people know at this point is that we do have a little uh, group of developers over here in America working on our own games that are kind of separate from uh, what's going on over there. Um, so we we are a small team, uh, so this this project's more like 
personal, maybe like indie scale game. Um, and since, I guess since PAX specifically, we kind of just had a proof of concept for our battle and this game that we thought was cool. Um, but that was the first time we really had seen people play it and kind of got, um, I guess, proof that the formula worked. Because uh, it's not a very typical game. Uh, it's not like you could describe it easily as maybe a platformer or a fighting game or something, and someone would just understand that. Um, so I think PAX was really invigorating for us in that way, uh, in that we knew we had something that we, we could build on and was fun. Um, and yeah, since then we kind of have just added content, um, tried to make the weapons in the game more interesting, tried to add more robots, and tried to flesh out a more full uh, kind of story to help build our world around the, the core game. Cool. So, uh, just to let everybody know at home here, uh, you know, there is uh, a lot going on in this game, but if you could tell from the trailer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're we're gonna have a story. We're gonna have PvP. There's there's a couple different ways to enjoy this game. So you know, getting all that tuned up and everything uh, has been something that you guys have been hard at work on, obviously, as you just explained. Uh, but the basis for the game is, uh, you know, a long time ago, Volters were created to defend the Earth. And then they weren't needed anymore. So the best way to make use of them was to create a, a fighting league for these uh, Voltas, as they're called. Uh, and that's where we come into uh, an organization called the World Volta Association. So that's kind of the, uh, the, the backbone of the game here. The World Volta Association, you're trying to become uh, one of the top pilots in there with your crew to, to rise up through the ranks. Uh, which, you know, I think is an interesting way to to do this. You experience it as a, as yourself and a little bit and, you know, recruiting crews and different members and things to build up, uh, you know, this robot. So you actually are, you know, controlling the robot, you're controlling the crew. Uh, you know, when you're working on this uh, on, on your end, you know, what, what were some of the things that you really enjoyed uh, developing uh, for this game and these characters? Sure. Um, so I spend a lot of time specifically on this headquarters system that we have. Um, in addition to the core game, there's kind of this meta game that exists around it, which is um, sort of like our our upgrade systems and our resource management all flows back into this, this headquarter concept where um, you're essentially building a base underneath this hangar where your robots are stored. Um, and in the base, you're trying to manage these relationships between the characters, um, keep them all happy so that they'll perform well uh, while they're doing their tasks in the base, um, and kind of increase the efficiency of how quickly you can upgrade the weapons you have or research new technologies um, to kind of just get more powerful overall as you go through the game. Um, and that's something I really enjoyed working on because I think we have really unique characters. Um, I'll kind of refer to uh, the little animal crew members in our game as characters um, and then we refer the robots as robots kind of like a separate entity um, but the characters are really interesting they're adorable uh, and they have actually like a lot of story uh, behind each and every one of them there's there's full missions uh, that explore their backgrounds and then some of them have unique uh, relationships with each other as well so getting to bring that out through the base and kind of bring the whole world full circle uh, something I really enjoyed working on. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, I think we've kind of laid a little bit of the groundwork here. So why don't we switch over and give the people what they want and let them see a little bit of uh, Volta in action. And we'll start with just going through a little bit of uh, the story overview so you can kind of get a sense of what the this game has in store for you. Good to go. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so what we're looking at here is kind of our main menu, right, for uh, Volta X. As you can see, we've got league battles and uh, customizing missions, inventory clan, and your headquarters mode. Now, missions is where we're going to dive into 
story a little bit. So let's take a look at what's going on there. Right. So um, we're kind of a bit ahead in the game. Uh, I'll show you guys specifically uh, one story battle uh, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, there's a couple features in here um, that stand out. There's a little, I guess you can grab this. There's a daily mission you can do just to get uh, coins every day. Um, you might notice on the left side of the screen, there are some uh, two panes for unlocked parts and unlocked rooms. So this bar on the left side of the screen actually shows your overall progress through the Volta League as far as your rank goes. Um, so as you kind of progress that rank, uh, you will be able to move vertically through uh, these panes here. You see here is, uh, this is considered the Bronze League division. So I've unlocked these parts and these rooms as well as this part of the story. Okay. And so, you know, as we're, as we're talking here, going through the story and the missions, you know, obviously you can see there's branching paths and different things are happening in each of these different episodes. And some of it is kind of key to characters. And there's, I could see mini-sodes, which are tiny little vignettes going on with the different characters. Um, you know, as, as you progress through the story, you know, you're going to learn not, not only more about uh, you know, the World Volta Association and the world at large, but you're also going to be interacting with, you know, the new characters and the crew members, crew members that you encounter along the way, uh, which I think is a really nice way to kind of ease all these different players and characters into the world. That's right. And, and that touches on what I was talking about before. Um, when I mentioned that the characters had background stories of their own that could be explored, uh, that is actually done through our mission system as well. Um, so here you can see uh, these have already been completed, but these are the missions that basically explore the, the elephant character Sheldon's background uh, and how he wound up in this world and kind of the, the other characters that he has interacted with along the way. Um, uh, in addition to that, we also have these, these missions that kind of explore the history of each of the robots as well. Okay. All right, so why don't you take us through uh, one little story segment here so we can give people a little taste of uh, what's, what's to hiding in all these different menus and folders. <laughs> sure. So this first uh, mission I'll show you guys today is actually with your uh, rival pilot. So in, in the world of Volta X, like uh, Luke explained before, Volta battling is kind of the, the biggest sport. Uh, it's the thing that everyone follows, everyone cares about. Uh, so your character that you play uh, has a dream of becoming a star pilot, basically. Um, so we're going to take our character from basically rookie, uh, starry-eyed kid to uh, hopefully star pilot along the way. Um, and of course, he has a rival. So we're going to battle him today. And his name is Connell. Connell. All right, so what we're seeing here is kind of what the gameplay is going to be uh, throughout, even story versus PvP. The gameplay is going to kind of be the same mold through each version, but obviously story mode, you're getting this nice little uh, cutscene, if you will, that overlays over top of what's happening. And you can see the crew here uh, that Ryan has uh, includes some characters in uh, red outfits, some characters in blue outfits. And uh, the hero character that you've actually got going for yourself is uh, our uh, tiger, Lisa, uh, who you will, of course, uh, be able to name yourself uh, thing. But when the game begins, you can choose between uh, the handsome fox uh, and uh, the uh, tiger. Uh, I believe her name is Rat Boy right now. Her name is uh, Rat Boy right now, which is... Uh, Appropriately <laughs> enough. Yes. But yeah, that's right. So in our story missions, we do have uh, dialogue in most occasions. Um, so here we'll see, uh, I think this is the first time that we encounter Connell in the story. So uh, our monkey, Benjamin here is kind of starstruck. Connell is kind of a superstar as far as, as he's concerned. So I think he's a little overwhelmed. He's not sure if we're out of our league here. Um, but Mr. Hornsby is reassuring him. And of course, our main character is ever vigilant, so we're gonna go for it. Okay. All 
All right, so what we're seeing here, uh, you know, is a little bit, uh, the menu shows uh, the interior rooms of what's going on inside the Volta robot. So, you know, much like many of your favorite uh, shows from back in the day where robots would combine and you'd have the different pilots in different areas, you know, that's a little bit of the vibe we see here in the, uh, the menu. And of course, the core gameplay uh, uh, action that's happening for the league on this practice field, you can see uh, on the screen above. Uh, uh, each individual room has some different uh, weapon loadouts that you can offer to it. Uh, but the robot head, uh, as we can see here, where at the top of the image uh, says range. So wherever the uh, Volta's headpiece is, is where your uh, individual special attack is, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, the, the warrior Volta here that we have, uh, uh oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, there is a lot going on quickly. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Connell is not taking it easy on you right now at all. Um, no, he never does. So electrifying the room, stunning some characters for, uh, you know, a short duration. Uh, you can see, you know, well, we're going to cover a little bit about you know, what's happening in each individual room when we progress to, to PvP. Uh, and I have a little bit more time to talk as we're going over it. Since this is a story mission, I'm kind of just quickly making, uh, you know, observations as to what's happening here. You know, nice right. little uh, animation there for for Benny as he, uh, you know, activates the room that he's in. Very cool. Uh, but as I was saying, so the warrior has uh, a, a rage special ability built into its uh, system. So what what exactly does that do? So the rage, when the warrior takes enough damage, uh, he'll actually all of his cooldowns on his rooms will become like greatly accelerated. Um, so basically, the strategy against warrior is you want to try to take out his strong melee weapons early if you can, um, because if he still has them around by the time he gets rage. Uh, it's very difficult to deal with. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and as you said, melee attack, we can see that there are also some ranged attacks, and you can kind of, you know, make a build on these uh, foundational Volta bodies that suits your play style, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so with this current build, I guess I'll touch on a little bit. Um, the drills are very good for destroying parts. So you'll see I actually destroyed all of the parts on the other robot, uh, and that was kind of my strategy going in. Uh, the more I could destroy on him, the safer my guys would kind of be over time, um, and the harder it would be for him to destroy my drills. So if later in the game I did get uh, low or I was in danger, Rage would probably be able to bail me out of that. Okay. So I guess just to sum up what we see here, um, our scoreboard screen... Uh, we get points for every room we destroyed uh, and every crew that we killed. Well, so I mean, I'll be able to kill yeah, all of his kills. And, we're not, you know. Right, we're not we're not completely eliminating these people. We're just, they're just unconscious. That's right. That's right. They're knocked out. Right, they're knocked out. So, and then you see here on the victory screen, uh, we get a little experience. You can level up characters. Obviously, we're going to take a look at that uh, as we progress through the stream here a little bit. Uh, but uh, you know, warrior, the Voltas level up, the individual crew members level up. You know, there's a lot of uh, depth to what's happening in the game on multiple levels, which, you know, provides a little bit of, uh, you know, incentive to not only keep exploring the story, but to keep tinkering with different characters throughout so that you're not just leaving some behind who aren't getting leveled. Yeah, that's right. This game focuses uh, entirely on that depth of combat and um, really exploring different combinations and unique ways to use things together uh, in combination with the skills that the characters have available to them to kind of explore different strategies or uh, counter maybe other more popular strategies that you're running into. And I see here in the battle reward, you know, we're getting components, we're earning credits. Uh, you know, what are we what are we using these components for? What are we using these credits for uh, after the battles? Sure. So uh, these components here are mostly for upgrading weapons that you have or assembling weapons that you've unlocked. 
Um, you'll start with only a few weapons to choose from, but like I showed before, as you progress through the tiers, you'll unlock new weapons. Um, once they become unlocked, they're not immediately available. You still need to collect the components to build that weapon and put it together. Uh, and that is done in the base, which uh, I guess we'll get to shortly. Sure. All right, so let's uh, progress through here. Okay, so missions are just a part of what goes on for the story. Story you'll also have to do, as uh, Ryan has been talking about and that he has worked on, is uh, invest in your headquarters a little bit. And uh, we're not going to go super deep into headquarters today. <laughs> guys to be able to explore it a little bit yourself and we only uh, have an hour and we only have an hour. <laughs> yeah we want to show more of the actual uh exciting gameplay and the different vaultas we have in the game but headquarters uh you know you'll be building you know your team's base right so everyone will start with the uh main room here which is kind of like the global uh uh you know room in Obviously, there's a big globe in the middle of it, uh, but you know, <laughs> you know it's important all... with the globe. Right, right. <laughs> uh, and from there, you know, you'll have to uh, build rooms out for uh, to sleep, to eat, to research. Uh, so, why don't you take us around a little bit in the headquarters that you've constructed? Sure. Uh, so, this is just a little sample setup. Um, you see, a lot of characters are actually on the move right now. Uh, if you look at the top of the screen uh, where the time is indicated, it's actually nighttime. So uh, a lot of these guys are on their way to bed right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, while they're sleeping, okay. they will be um, regenerating these stats that you see here um, on, the, on, the, on the bottom right. So there's, like we kind of touched on, there's a lot of depth here, and there's a lot that I could explain, but essentially these stats all contribute to their overall efficiency in the base. Um, so they've all woke up now. So what we're going to see is they're going to go basically back to work. Um, and what I mean by that is um, this screen here that we have, we basically use to schedule that character's day. Um, okay. Yeah. So, you know, this guy is, needs a place to sleep. So he's probably low on stats right now because all the beds are taken. <laughs> So I can, you know, find a, a barracks to send him to, or during the day, if I want him to work on researching a certain topic, I could send him to a room like this that contributes to that as well. Okay. And I see too, you know, you've got uh, water filtration things going on and energy things. So obviously these things are, the individual rooms are going to use up resources, uh, but so you'll have to continually add more resources as you add more rooms. But the, main, right. the main aspect here is that you know, these guys have a place to go after their battles in the WVA to not only hang out, but improve the Voltas for later use. That's right. So we're not only improving the Voltas, but they're improving each other uh, as well. Um, so if we look uh, here, we can see this character has uh, currently three friendships that are basically building. Uh, and those friendships develop based on the amount of time they spend in a room with that other character. Um, friendships, like you could probably assume, carry outside of the battle. So if you're playing in a battle and your crew members have uh, reached a certain level of friendship, they'll actually gain increased levels of experience from battling together just through that familiarity with, with each other. Ah, okay, so another reason why it's smart to kind of change up the different crews that you're bringing in and using across not only story mode, but when you jump into PvP. So you're always improving everybody in every possible way. Right. Um, and just to touch on what you mentioned, um, when you kind of get this further look into a single room, we'll see this pane on the left come up that kind of describes that. Oh, okay. She's going to karaoke now, I guess. Um, <laughs> so this pane on the left here kind of just describes who's assigned to that room, what that room does. Here we can see the music studio is a place that your crew can go to improve their social stat. Um, and then on the bottom of it, you see these icons that indicate the three different resources that the base uses. Uh, and they are water, power, and air, like you said. Um, so this, essentially what this means is every tick of the base uh, is kind of how we phrase it here. Uh, this room drains three of each of those resources. 
I see. Yeah, and super but that correlates our headquarters here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, you know, I've been playing the game for for a little bit now, so I kind of know <laughs> what I'm doing. Um, but that's much nicer than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you. I'll help you after this. Um, the, those numbers on the room correlate directly to this UI that you see at the top, uh, which basically is just indicating how many of those resources you're generating per tick, and those come directly from having these rooms built. Here you see this room generates. Uh, a positive 13 every tick and so forth. Okay. All right, well, now that we've seen a little bit inside there, let's take a look at uh, some of the different uh, options as far as using that experience for your crew to decide who's coming where and what benefits you can find for them. Sure. So I'll jump into Customize with the first robot here. Um, this build, we kind of touched on and you saw it in the story battle um, that I just went through, but kind of one of the ways that choosing characters goes into a build, uh, since this build is already made, I'll kind of show you why I made the choices I made here. Okay. Um, these drills, uh, like I explained before, are primarily for destroying rooms quickly. Um, they do a lot of damage, but their cooldown is relatively long. So this is more of a burst oriented build um okay. he has heat rays on the shoulder um to basically create more pressure overall for the enemy um and in case that's not clear the heat rays apply fire to the room that you target with them uh, and what that means is that room will take damage over time as long as that fire is in that room and it will also grow uh the longer it's left alone Right. So, you know, not only are you attacking the room and doing immediate damage, you're doing sustained damage over a period of time, uh, but you do have the ability to put fires out. Uh, you can send your different crew members, if you happen to be the one taking the fire damage, to the room to attempt to put fires out, to repair rooms as things are happening. So you aren't just heat, you know, using a heat ray, lighting a room on fire, and then, you know, the other person is completely out of luck. They can recover, right? That's right. And that's kind of what I was getting at when I say it creates pressure. Um, because not only is it doing damage to the room um, and can be put out, but maybe you might have noticed during the first battle, I think you touched on it, was when I attacked with certain rooms that were occupied by certain characters, they kind of empowered that room and enabled that room to do more damage. Um, and one of the interesting things that fire does is if you do have a room on fire and you do need to put it out, that's a character that you're not empowering with at that time because they have to go put that fire out. Let's see. So a little bit of insight into, you know, kind of how we form some of the strategies here. Um, in addition to heat rays, we have a missile launcher uh, in our body here. Um, these are good or basically uh you you can target three rooms every time you attack with them okay. so they they do also help create that pressure if you want to spread out some damage um but they're in this build currently to cover uh, a weakness of this build which is drones um and we'll we'll get to those at some point but right We'll see those. Now, if, if we could go back to that real quick, I did see here, too, sure. uh, that some of the... You not only have offensive things, but I see things like a sprinkler, uh, you know, so you guys have defensive uh, attachments as well for the different bolters. That's right. And that's something you'll see uh, more commonly in body pieces. That's kind of our utility slot in most cases. Um, you can dedicate it towards something to help your overall offense. Um, like generator in this case just speeds up all your cooldowns if you really want to go for that rush sort of strategy. Um, okay. One really important thing that uh, I don't think we've actually covered yet is uh, we showed the scoreboard and I kind of explained how I gained points for destroying rooms and killing crew, but one key feature of the battle is regardless of the score, if you destroy the opponent's head or the cockpit of their robot, you immediately win. Okay, but I assume that it's not going to be uh, a very easy task. 
Right. It's it's kind of an all in strategy, um, and you know, and there's some people who who prefer that. And things like the generator and uh, heavy long cooldown weapons uh, will usually be found in those kinds of builds, uh, head rush builds or things like that. I see. Okay, yeah, and you can see here too, you know, uh, we're missile launcher, it's going over. Here's how much robot damage it does. Here's how much crew damage it does to the crews in the windows. Your charge timer, uh, you know, how many uh, hit points that particular part has in that build. So you know, there's a lot of different stats that uh, you can manage and be aware of uh, when putting these builds together. Right, and when we kind of looked at the base a little bit and we mentioned upgrading parts. Um, these are the kinds of things that you will be upgrading. Uh, so you'll see the difference from your current level to your next possible level. And you'll see, um, you know, in different cases, it depends, but robot damage, crew damage, or charge timers going up or down uh, to kind of signify their newly gained power. Okay. All right, well, why don't we take uh, take this build into uh, a PvP match and uh, show off a little bit about the things that we've been talking about and how this build kind of, uh, you know, excels. Sure. Uh, so I got all my parts here all sorted out. Um, I kind of know generally what I want to go for. Uh, I want to pick apart the other robots' parts to kind of create more breathing room for myself and win a match that pretty much goes the distance. Um, so... To help facilitate that, the three characters I've chosen are the monkey uh, named Benjamin, this hawk named Mr. Hornsby, and this bunny rabbit girl named Zephy. Um, so if we actually click here, we can look through our different characters. On the left, we see the kind of stats that they offer. Um, and just briefly, these the main thing I'm looking for right off the bat is what kind of rooms they empower. Um, I see. Yeah, so we see here with Benjamin, his melee rooms get a 2.15 multiplier in their damage if he is in the room when you attack with it. Um, so that obviously works with our drills here, uh, and that's why he's there. And if we go one step further, we can look at his skill tree here. Okay, okay, I see. So, kind of, you know, the the different kinds of uh, crew members that you'll add, right? Uh, the red guys are a little bit more melee focused. Uh, blue pilots are, uh, we'll say, range weapon focused. And the yellows are like uh, engineer, just to kind of broadly uh, paint that picture. But the leveling tree here, uh, you know, backs that up. And they can increase how much more damage they're even doing for those particular roles. That's right, yeah. Um, generally, that is true. Um, red, we use the color red to kind of signify melee. Um, so you'll see it in the iconography for the parts themselves, as well as the characters that um, go with those rooms. Uh, the yellow ones, um, yeah, they typically are there for repair and uh, extinguish and things like that, and they have a little bit higher health. Um, but everybody has unique skills in their tree that no other character has. Um, and the reason I mention that is I might have three or four red characters to choose from, and they all seem like a good choice in this case, but I'm specifically going with Benjamin because of his skill Moxie here. Um, and if you remember, the build that we're going for is to target and destroy specific parts. Um, right. So this skill Moxie here, if he is in the room that you attack with, and that attack destroys a part, it actually going to instantly refresh the cooldown on that part. So the value of this in a room like Drill, which does heavy damage with a long cooldown, is very strong for this kind of build. Okay. So that's similar here with um, the Hawk. We went with him because um, he's going to be able to get this skill called Concentration. And what Concentration does is the longer they sit in a room and are untouched, they kind of build up the amount of damage that they contribute to that room. I see, I see. So, and that, we saw a little bit of that in the uh, in the story mode, but we'll see it when we jump into actual gameplay here. When your characters are in a room and they activate the weapon, uh, you do get a little uh, nice little animation overlay showing how much uh, 
you know, they're helping. That's right. So cool. with this build, um, you know, we have the one missile launcher in the chest. And if you look, that room is glowing right now as I hover over the Hawk, indicating that's the room he's going to start in. So the okay. goal of him is he's going to sit in there. He's never going to move. And we hope he doesn't get hit. And if he doesn't get hit, <laughs> those missiles are going to do a lot of damage. Um, so All right. just quickly, I guess we'll look at her tree as well. Um, she has melee four, uh, which just gives her a little bit more bonus melee damage than others. Uh, and then she has a dash as well, which lets her move from room to room a little quicker. Uh, since I don't have a utility repair or sort of extinguish guy, she's going to be there just in case things get a little sketchy and I need her to go put out a fire or something like that. Okay. Well, that's good. So, you know, moving, moving her around quickly while everyone else is kind of focused on staying in their core areas. Right. And as that drill is cooling down, I mean, she doesn't have much to do in there anyway, so might as well. So I'm going to jump into essentially what is a PvP match for us. Uh, in this case, uh, it will be against AI, but the gameplay will be the same, and we can kind of see how sure. this battle unfolds, and hopefully Obviously, our strategy works. Uh, Volta is uh, not out yet. We're coming out summer 2020 on Nintendo Switch, but, uh, you know, so we're going to battle against some AI opponents here, which uh, not only nice for us for the purpose of this demo, but nice for everybody at home, uh, you know, when they get a chance to play, kind of test out builds before they take them online. Okay, so right away I'm looking at what he has. Um, I see some shock punches, which are going to stun my guys, a rocket punch, and a drill. I'm mostly scared of his drill, uh, so I'm going to go for it right away. And unfortunately, it looks like he has the drones that I was worried about. So we can kind of explore why the missile launcher is in my build. <laughs> okay. All right, so you can see here too. So we're in the Warrior Volta. We're going up here against uh, the many-legged uh, Brocken Volta, which is... Uh, you know, another type. So all the different types have uh, uh, different looks and vibes, but they primarily uh, offer the same amount of rooms for customization. So you don't have a, a definitive advantage from one Volta to the other, correct? That's right. Um, and their skills are really just there to kind of help facilitate the strategy that you maybe already had in mind. Um, our Hawk is getting destroyed here. But quickly, I'm going to fire off one missile um, uh, so yeah, to see that this ball. drone here. And maybe you could explain what the drone kind of does. Yeah, so uh, you know, the opponent using the drone, right? So there, you can have elements of the build which uh, will force your opponent to target them first. Uh, some characters might have a shield. Uh, which will deflect any attacks you do uh, at the start, and you'll have to take down that shield before you can really get working on the rest of the opponent. Oh, and the Brock gets charged it up here. Yeah, so that's his super, which is going to stun uh, my entire robot. I can't move any of my characters. I can't attack any of my weapons. Um, but we see here, as I'm destroying runes, I'm getting these Moxie procs on Monkey. Uh, so I'm right. getting to recast that drill over and over. And I've taken enough damage here where I actually have Rage. So we're going to activate that. That's a good thing. That's see how a... much damage we can do. <laughs> Hopefully yeah, we can dig we're... ourselves out of this a little bit. Hornsby is hurting a little bit. You can see, you know, next to the characters, they each have their own <laughs> individual health, as well as the room health, uh, you know, the destroyed rooms. You can still run through them, even if you can't actually activate them. But you can tell they're definitely destroyed. Uh, this Brocken is definitely putting the work in on you. He is, and my cooldowns are going super fast here. I'm going to try to get one more room destroyed, uh, and that should refresh our cooldown one more time if he can kill it. Yes, he got it. Nice. This is kind of a, just a slobber knocker, I guess. Uh, <laughs> most people <laughs> swing for the fences, and rooms are going down fast. Now, it should also be said, too, that you're, uh, you know, you're losing... Uh, rooms at a relatively quick rate because you're playing a rather difficult AI opponent. That's correct. And, and like I was saying before, Zephy, I'm going to try to get her over to that room to save it real quick. Um, it looks like she's going to be able to pull it off. He's got basically nothing left except a couple rockets. Hopefully that doesn't finish that room. And it and did. It did. Bonus attack in the room. 
So what happened here was I had the missile launcher to counter the drone, but he destroyed the missile launcher immediately so that those drones, which are just kind of autonomous robots that attack you all battle, was able to survive the whole battle. So I couldn't really do anything about that. Luckily, I was able to destroy more rooms than him, barely. So we just right. kind of stole that one. <laughs> It's, and sometimes that's what it's going to come down to in the WVA. You know, you're not always going to be able to knock out all three enemy pilots. You're not always going to be able to take out the head. But if you could do more damage and you could take out more rooms, you might just squeak one out. That's so true. And as things get more hectic and fire is spreading and rooms are dying, those last five seconds, even if you're missing all of your parts, you got no arms, you got no shoulders, you're just standing there, you could still win. Well, that's super important, you know. Uh, never give up. Never give up. You've always got a chance, especially if you've got the right build that you think can go up against uh, the correct opponent matchup. That's right. And so after that battle, we'll see we have our rewards here. Since this was an official league match, uh, we're actually going to also get uh, trophy points, which are how we progress our tier, uh, which relates to what I showed you earlier in the mission menu. Um, to kind of unlock more story stuff and more weapons and things like that. I see. So, so you know, doing some PvP is as crucial to evolving the story, uh, you know, as doing the story itself. That's right. Yeah. Okay. They kind of go right, hand well, in hand. Yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. Let's take a look at another build. We've seen the warrior in two fights. What other kind of uh, voltas do you have for us today? Sure. So this is Raiden. Um, we can look at. Uh, his setup here. Uh, right away, the thing that stands out the most is this robot actually has three body parts. Um, okay. Other robots mostly have two, some have one. Um, and like I said, the body parts usually represent uh, like a utility slot. Um, so I don't actually have a build ready to go here for him, so we can kind of make one on the fly. Okay. Uh, right away. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Real quick to interrupt you. The the ride in here is slightly different than the warrior in that it, he has one more uh, room uh, available to customize. That's correct. Total rooms is higher as well. So right away, I'm thinking, okay, I have utility slots. I have a lot of rooms here that I can work with. So I'm thinking defensive build with him uh, to kind of contrast the last one we saw with the warrior. Um, I'm going to throw a generator in here just to kind of okay. keep my rooms flowing a little more smoothly into each other. Um, we have these bots here that are actually semi, they're honorary crew members. They can't be directly controlled, uh, but they will automatically go and try to help out wherever they can. So we'll get one of them. Uh, we'll also throw a medic bot. Uh, the repair bot will try to fix our rooms. The medic bot will actually go and try to heal our crew members if they're taking too much damage. Okay, um, okay. That so seems smart, given how quickly some crew members uh, were injured in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the reason that I'm, I'm going for that is uh, I'm going to go with a shield for this build, which is a pretty unique weapon uh, compared to all the others here. The shield, as long as it's up, uh, it's alive and I'm not performing another action, like jumping in the punch or something like that, all incoming attacks are actually going to get redirected to the shield for as long as it's alive. And as long as that's happening, I'm going to try to put in Sheldon here, who, if you remember, is a yellow character and specializes in repair. Right. We're going to try to keep him in there and keep that shield alive for as long as it can survive and he can survive smart um so we're missing offense here uh looks like we can survive but we don't really have any sort of major wing condition so i'm gonna go for the drone launchers that we saw last match um but i'm gonna go oh, with it worked for him so why wouldn't it work for you right? <laughs> might as well add it. that's the thought process a lot of the time you know as soon as you lose to something you're like wow that was cheap let me try that <laughs> so we're gonna do that um the Asura only had, um, or sorry, the, the Brock and the Octopus type guy that we just saw, he only had uh, one slot available for shoulder. So he was only able to get that one drone out and it was kind of sitting throughout the match. Um, we can have four total at any one time. 
So with two of these and a generator, we should be able to get all four of those going relatively quickly and hopefully okay. keep up if he's able to destroy them. Uh, so we'll go with one more semi-offensive kind of utility weapon here, which is the Heat Saber. Yeah, if you can guess, um, this is a melee weapon, but it does also apply fire to the rooms that you hit with it. Uh, seems like that might come in handy. Yeah. So we'll go with the same loadout here. Um, generally, my strategy is going to be get the drones out to kind of pester his rooms. If a room is getting low, I'm going to try to finish it off with the heat saber with Benjamin in there and reset that cooldown. Uh, hopefully, our rooms will stay safe through our shield. And uh, you know, as long as we have Grant, I'm going to replace the generator with uh, missile launchers as well. And then we'll keep Grant in there, and he'll help kind of cover uh, if we actually wind up facing drones as well. Put Benjamin in the head there, and we'll keep Grant over here. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, the last thing to check with any build is what color you want, which is probably the most important part. Oh, that's like sharp it. with the teal. <laughs> it's very nice. Actually, looks good with the orange. It matches the sword. I think I'll just go with that. Yeah, that's pretty tight. So the color color stuff and weapons like that how are we earning and unlocking those are all those tied to the mission tiers uh are there random drops that are going to happen uh, mm. throughout the game throughout pvp yeah so it's a little bit of both um some of these things will be unlocked through those tiers as you progress and then some also will be unlocked by playing those robots or doing their robot specific missions uh, and then there are some that can also drop uh through the chest at the end of battle I was going to say, it almost looks like a little bit of a mirror match here, but then he threw up this <laughs> big bubble shield. This is very strange. Uh, not what I was expecting to see. Uh, kind of looks like some sort of stall build here. So he does have a force field, and that means it will uh, kind of intercept or block the first ranged attack that he receives until that room recharges. Okay. You know, oh, let me see here. You know, you got a little bit of electrocution there, Sheldon. Uh, you know, I gotta say, I do love the little uh, black and white skeleton show. It's really <laughs> like a, a, a classic. It gives, gives me Home Alone vibes, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, nice. So we're working on his shield here. We're gonna try to finish it off if we can. I think it's on fire and it's getting pretty low. Down a seven, but he's keeping it alive. If you see the health there, it just keeps inching back up. So somebody's in there on his end, right? Like, I mean, while we can't see that there's a crew member in there from our perspective, you can tell because the health is regenerating in that room that someone is there working on it. Right, that's very perceptive, but that's an important part of playing, actually, is using the information that's available to you to, to your benefit. Um, since I know now we can see that room is not going up, so there's no one in there, I'm going to try and hit it with a missile and then hopefully finish it off with Benjamin and get a reset on that heat saber. Let's see what happens. We're at four drones and they're pointed at his head, so we're kind of distracting him there. It, just it looks like the fire finished that room off right before I could hit it, so we actually didn't get the reset. Uh, bad calculation on my part. You can see here that Sheldon is being targeted. You know, you can see where the opponent is also targeting too. A little uh, crosshairs will pop up on a room. So, you know, if it looks like a character is getting low on health, you might be able to sneak them out of the room before the attack comes through. Right, and that's a big part of it too. Um, as we'll see, if we get into the battle after this, we could try a uh, more crew-oriented attacking build. Sheldon is really taking a beating, but that is what he signed up for. That's what we put him on the team for. The shield is still alive. Uh, we're going to get him out of there right before he dies, hopefully. Oh, gosh, yeah. So that was cool. Just barely. Uh, so I see here, too, the uh, Ryman build here has a Mountain Strike. So what does Mountain Strike do for its special? So Mountain Strike is kind of like a, like a sumo body slam, if you can imagine it. He jumps in and he hits every room on the opponent for about 12 damage i believe it is by default uh which wow. is kind of working for us you can see we have equal pressure going out to all these rooms and we're just picking off ones that are low uh and his head this whole time is kind of slowly going down right and you can see a little repair bot running around 
fixing up rooms as needed. There we go. So we made it to the end of the match without losing any rooms, which was totally our strategy. Um, we're not going to have a big, flashy, I destroyed every room he has, but we're just looking for one or two. We'll take it, and that's a win. So. Yeah, so sometimes you can build that tanky build that is just meant to outlast somebody just long enough to, to get the win. Right. And I guess that's what happens when you kind of mirror match a little bit is, you know, you're experiencing the same kind of battle, even though he had uh, a slightly better uh, shield in the force field than you did with your shield. But you still managed to uh, pull that one out. Uh, an impressive win. Uh, yeah. And you can see here we actually got a palette for our robot as well. So oh, nice. New color. A little a new colorway. <laughs> Very cool. Picked up a couple more, uh, you know, points in our Silver League division to improve our ranking within the WVA, which is always good. Uh, so I think we have time for one more uh, build. Okay. So I'll go do this one kind of quick because I know we are getting... Uh, to the end here, but essentially these are our pile bunker weapons. They, uh, if you see the damage here, robot damage to a room is very low, but crew damage is extremely high. Um, these rooms, these weapons actually penetrate the room and target the crew inside. Uh, oh, so to help us with that, we'll throw a radar on here, which will you'll see in the battle will actually show me where his crew is hiding. And then I'm going to put fire on, um, which might seem confusing at first, but I'm essentially going to use that fire to lure his characters to the room to put that fire out, and that's where I'm going to hit with my pile bunker. That's pretty heartless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get a color here. Uh, my pink is pretty cool. Um, we got Susan here. Uh, she actually has a skill here where she does increased damage with rooms that are... Uh, essentially have blades on them, which our pile bunker falls into that category. I will keep Benjamin for the other one, and we'll jump in. Nice. So I will just throw it out here. This is a hard to pull off build. This okay. is the, I want to do something flashy. It's very rewarding when it works, but it might not. <laughs> okay. Oh, and we're getting matched up against something funky here. Oh, look out. <laughs> now, this is not a Volta I've seen before. I've heard of him. I haven't seen him. I mean, I definitely still uh, am rocking the, the uh, ride and body in my Volta experiences. So, uh, <laughs> here too. so we ha you have the radar going off and it's, uh, you know, previously you kind of had to look at the health of a room to see if someone was in it uh, working. But now the radar will tell you exactly where people are within uh, an opposing Volta. That's right. And we set that room on fire. And like we predicted there, um, his hawk actually moved out. But his elephant was already on the way to that room to put that fire out. So we were able to get a hit. Seems like he's repairing the head right now. So we're going to go for that one. And he was already on his way out. So it dodged us there. But the strategy was sound. <laughs> it was a little slower. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Uh oh, and our oh no, he's about to get it. Yeah, he's. So we got our elephant out. out just, made just made it. Very close. We're go for the head again. See if we can't finish off that elephant, and we got him. So he was actually stuck mid attack there, uh, which helped us out to get that last hit. Uh, we're in danger of losing one of our heat rays here. Uh, too slow. Oh, we definitely lost it. <laughs> this guy is showing no mercy if we can't get a hit on the fox. It looks like he already left, so I wasted that one. Oh, he came back at the last second. So once he decided to be on his way back to that room, that was it for him. He can't he can't change his mind basically midway, so that's why we we're able to get that hit there. Uh, I'm going to use my special here, which is, regardless of the cooldown, instantly fires off all my shoulder spots. Uh, in this case, it's just a one heat ray, but right. try to get it off before it dies. What you doing? I was really trying to hold on there. Yeah, yeah. You're still putting in the work. I mean, we're still up uh, five to one in the total points. Oh, we actually got him. Nice. The so last hit there on the hawk. Uh, again, I think he had already committed to an attack with that crew in that room, so he was kind of stuck. 
Um, one thing I did want to touch on was the benefit this robot has is uh, while people are trying to dodge those attacks, his arms are super stretchy. So he actually attacks faster than any other robot with melee attacks because he doesn't have to jump in. Uh, uh, see, another yeah, reason was... I with him for that. I noticed some of the other you have to jump to attack. He can kind of hit from a little bit of a distance even with them still being melee. That's right. So a little bit of a little less reaction time for the opponent there to get out of the way. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so, you know, that was uh, a quick glimpse, uh, uh, you know, at a few different builds over the course of, of our time here. We showed you a little bit of uh, story mode as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot uh, we have to show and uh, explore with this game over the course of, uh, you know, the summer here. Uh, while before the game comes out, you know, Volta X will be available on Nintendo Switch in the summer of 2020, which is this summer, guys, which is fun. Uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully what we showed you today, uh, you know, got you a little bit interested in the game and, you uh, you know, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about it. If you want to stay up to date on everything Volta X, please follow us on Twitter at Volta X Game. We hope to talk to you soon. And uh, Ryan, thank you so much for guiding us through everything today, uh, taking time uh, from working on the game to come play it with us here on the New Game Plus Expo live stream. Of course, yeah. Thanks for giving us the opportunity. Um... We're really excited about our game. We're really proud of it. Uh, like I said, it's a small team. Uh, so this game is really the product of the handful of people working on it. And we think, you know, hopefully a lot of our personalities will shine through in that way. Um, so just the opportunity to show the game, I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. All right. Well, thank you to our friends at uh, New Game Plus Expo for having us. Uh, be sure to stay tuned because there's plenty more to come right here on Twitch. We will see you soon. Thanks for watching.